today we are in a car that I've actually not driven before and I've wanted to drive one and in fact I very nearly bought one about a year ago. This is a E92 BMW M3. So tell me about the car, why did you get this and what are the main mods you've done to it? Sure. Hi guys. Uh, yeah, I, I got this car in I think March 2017. I had a couple couple cars before, including a, a GTI and, and an E46 M3. And I uh, always just wanted to have a V8 car, so yep. I took a break from, from driving for two years when I moved to SF, but ultimately saw this car on uh, Shift.com. It was clean. Oh, there you go. And uh, it was easy. I test drove the car, and, and I just fell in love. It's so comfortable and so easy to drive. That, you do everything, uh, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much everything. I, I really didn't mean to make this car what it is today. Uh, it really meant to be a car just to drive on the weekend, you know, be able to go to the track once a year, twice a year. Yeah. But things just kind of went off the rails. They just went a little bit nuts. But I, I think uh, <laughs> the car is still drivable. I mean, hopefully you think so. But no, um, it's very comfortable. You're saying you've got yeah. the JRZ uh, suspension on this, which feels really good. Yeah, and it's just the JRZ um, RS1, the one way. The one way. Not, not no three way, no two way craziness. You know, non remote. And hey, one way is all you need. Yeah. <laughs> And then some exhaust stuff because you want to hear the pipes. <laughs> sure. It's a big part of this car. So you got so. the Valtronic, which we're currently in quiet mode, which is very nice. Don't want to be disturbing the, the residents on this road right now. Right. Push it over to manual mode, so I'll ease the paddles. Second and if gear. you want, the M mode will give you pretty much everything it wants if you want. The M mode, right here? Yeah, there you go. Ah, okay. No love for first the, uh, start first. the valves open, huh? You know what? <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. It's open now? Yeah. All right. I can hear it. Thanos time, baby. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, that's loud. Yeah. Anyone who knows me knows I like high revving naturally aspirated and this is like the perfect the perfect example of that. It feels like two S two thousand motors <laughs> put in a V shape. Oh this oh. guy is I don't know. Please don't do what you're doing. Oh, you're just parking? Oh, okay. Interesting. Alright. All right. I guess they want to do a tour around here. Smoke a cigarette. Oh my god. Look at the cows. This guy. Alright, we're just gonna get around him. you got the JRZ dampers with a pretty good spring rate on it. It feels very softly sprung to me still. Yeah, the paddles are actually a lot easier to use than this. this the lever is just too short. I'm not going to do one of those drift boy shifters <laughs> <laughs> CAEs, I think they are. Yeah, yeah. I have a CAE in my you car. Do? Yeah. <laughs> driving this car more with the valves closed. Really? Yeah. You're not self-conscious. I just, yeah, that and just the pure induction noise, uh, it's unfiltered, you know? <laughs> I think you gotta buy one to have stock exhaust then. I, is, does this sound like stock exhaust right now? It does. This Dude, is basically how it sounds. Stock yeah. is great. Yeah. This is a great stock exhaust. <laughs> yeah. And there's no fake BS, like, speaker trickery going yeah. on with the induction, like the, like the F80. The one thing I'm not a big fan of on this car is the steering. Ah. Is this electric power steering? It is, uh, it is, what do you call it? Is it's it hydraulic? hydraulic? It's hydraulic? 
What do you feel? Yeah, I just don't feel a whole lot. That's the thing. Like the, the weight is good. The the, the accuracy, the precision is pretty good. It's just I don't get a lot of texture about the road surface being transmitted through the steering wheel. It might just be the weight of the car. I mean, you have some cars that are really communicative. Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit spoiled in that. Like most of my cars that I have are like 3,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, so this is that definitely a couple steps up in terms of weight and size. Wow, this car's really good. I was pushing it a little bit harder and I could really feel the, the balance of the car, like throttle oversteer. I love yep. that. Yep. That's something you, I can't get in my Cayman. You give it more throttle, essentially just squats down. That weight on the rear just squats down and it hooks up. I like to make it drivable on yeah. these uh, back roads. But surprisingly, it's very, very drivable. Like, I'm, I'm just so impressed by JRZs. You can get a whole setup for, I think, like, three to four thousand dollars, including springs, race camper plates, yeah. rear shock mounts, okay, not rear bad. jacks, helper springs, all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guys, you, hear, you heard it here. If, if you have an E92 M3 and you actually care about not only handling, but also like ride quality on the street, don't skimp on coilovers. Like yeah. JRZs and MCS, is, this is what I've learned through like having friends like you and like Jeff and like Sago and everyone really got like the top of the line dampers. It makes a huge difference and it's absolutely worth every penny. I had this so-called uh, cup kit, I, you know, I, th I thought I was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, pretty pretty newbie moves. But, um, so I just got a cheap suspension setup. It was just H&R Sports Springs and right, uh, right. Coney Yellow shocks. It was just completely undrivable on the street. That, see, the temptation's always there. Like, I fell for that trap on my E39. Right. I got Coney Yellow shocks. And I was like, hey, stock springs, right. just Coney shocks. Should be good, right? It was so, so uncomfortable on the street. I think it was worse. It is worse stock. on the street. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If I had gotten this car originally, I think I probably would have kept it. Huh. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. But <laughs> hey, I just got a freaking 911, so. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it is, but uh, I, need to, I need it to run properly. It's still misfiring. I'm waiting for you to get it ready so we can go back to the track. And hell yeah, uh, hell yeah. Maybe you can do a track review. Yeah, of this car versus the 911. I think a lot of people would like to see that. I want I want you to drive this in the track trip with, uh, with the AR1 tires on. Oh, You can fit 295 squares. There's a lot of more grip. Oh, man. And the car is just a lot more manageable then. Okay. I love square tire setups on front engine rear wheel drive cars. Yeah. It just makes the balance so playful. I think even though like I've I basically moved on to mid engine and, and, and rear engine for the for the past you know over a year all my cars have been mid or rear. I think front engine rear drive still speaks to me the most. I'm still trying to learn how to drive mid engine to be honest. Oh. Um, it, it's not natural for me power oversteer. Um, I'm sure you can induce it in like a 911, but it it's not it doesn't happen in the same way like. You don't give it the same inputs and the same order and the same yeah. speed that you do in like a car like this. I hear you kind of have to just brake, deep in, yeah. trail brake, get the car rotated, and then you throttle hard and the car just squats in the exit. Exactly, it's yeah. It's different. Trail braking is, goes a long way in a mid-engine or a rear drive car, whereas in this one, all you got to do is, is give it more gas. Yeah. And it just the rear just comes out. Yeah. And then when I drove um, my friend's E46 M3, on MCS coilovers. Man, that thing was just like, it was like this, but it felt smaller, more manageable with the power and the size and the weight. The engine revving out to 8,000 and getting that throttle oversteer around every corner is just a, just a joy. I don't manual shame anyone who buys the E90 or E92 with this transmission. It's just so good. I think it suits the car more. It's high revving, the yeah. gearing's really aggressive with DCT. It yeah. lets you make more use of the power band. And also, like the manual versions of this car, the transmissions just don't feel that good. Let's talk about maintenance for a sec. About specifically about track prep, um, throttle actuators, and rod bearings. So, <laughs> tell me about that. Like, how much oh, do those cost? And... So, throttle actuators—they went bad on me at about I think like sixty thousand miles. Okay. The car is eighty now. Yeah. And um, they just wanted to limp mode them occasionally, and then was on the track. No, just on the street. Oh. Just, it doesn't really, it's not linked to like throttle or hard driving. It's just when oh, it dies. Oh, it just happens, it happens. So I bought an FCP Euro. I think it was like, like 1200 for a set. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the installs, not too bad. It's one on each bank, right? One on each bank, yep. Gotta pull some stuff. So it's not the worst job, but not the easiest job. Okay. But you do it once for FCP. And you're just good, right? set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, rod bearings, this is a long story. So I actually 
how the rod bearings changed to yeah. the uh, V bearings that have extra clearance. Yeah. They have all this data and proof that it's like better design. It sure. supposedly solves the, the clearance, which is too too small versus industry standard. Right. But I actually blew the motor, and the motor died on the original one. How did that happen? This happened around um, September 2019. Was it from an over, over red or something? I'm not sure. I, I doubt it was the rod bearings. <coughs> it, but basically, I was coming around turn six at Sonoma, and I got a temperature warning, and I was like, that's weird. Yeah. I was driving it pretty hard, but it was just weird yeah. to be that early in the session. So I um, just did a cool down, went into the paddock. And once I slowed down, I started noticing there's like a knock, knock, knock. Oh, no. That increases the RPM. And that was it. Oh, no. I, I think what happened was the, uh, I think the main bearing blew. And then the oil comes out of the main bearing and goes to rod bearing number one. Uh -huh. And that's where we popped the motor open. Now uh, it was seized oh, into man. the crank. But it was still drivable. I, I limped home from a Sonoma. Oh, okay. Home. That's good. <laughs> so, we can, so basically what you're saying is like the, the rod bearings still fail even though you upgrade to the I, better design. Yeah. It, I don't think anything is bulletproof in cars in the track. That's that's a good point. Okay, so I guess the moral of the story is these cars are not bulletproof <laughs> even if you do all the uh, the track prep. Freaking amazing car. Uh, thanks so much for letting me experience Ken. You're welcome. We'll have to do like a part two on track because I feel like you only get half of the car driving. The yeah, it's crazy. no, a absolutely. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. So. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the M3. Uh, to me, it feels like a big S2000. <laughs> All right, see you next time.